Hello everyone, I am Tag. And this is Bob. And you are listening to Bob and Tag Talk. Before we start the show, I'd like to point out that the topics discussed on Bob and Tag Talk are for informational purposes only. So please do not take this as investment advice. We urge you to do your own research before making any investment. All right, so today we'll talk about mental models and how they are useful in everyday life, not just in finance, but in everyday life. So how would you describe mental models? So let's uh, start with the standard definition of mental model. Basically, it's a uh, kind of a concept or an, uh, basically, let's take a concept idea or any kind of a theory that you want to understand. So your mental model helps you to understand that particular concept. And uh, the same mental model can be applied for different, different ideas. Basically, it's the f- overarching thing is, it is some, it's a tool that helps you understand and helps you, you know, deal with the situation or make decision and etc. So, uh, let's say uh, a mental model is something where, okay, you already have a model in mind uh, on, uh, on wh- how one particular thing works. You're using that same mental model to understand how another concept works. Is exactly. that okay? Exactly. That's right. Take an example. So, you know, uh, something that everybody understands, you know, bargaining. You go to a shop, you try to bargain for an item, and then, so you try to buy for, buy a product for paying some amount of money. Right. So you're, you're a buyer. Your model, your mental model is, the lower the price, the better it is for you. Correct, correct. And the shopkeeper's model is, the higher the price, the more profit he makes. Correct. Then okay. you enter into a negotiation. Huh. And so you have a mental model of making. As a buyer, you have a different mental model. Uh-huh. As a seller, you have a, have a bit different mental model. Okay. Now, the same thing when you are selling. So the same model is applies because you invert it or something like that. So it, the same idea can be used to understand different, different situations and uh, in different, different ways of thinking about it. Um, how do you think this would apply to uh, investing and uh, yeah, basically investing? How do you think? So the basic concept of uh, any kind of making an investment and if you want to make a profit, the whole point of making an investment is to imp- appreciate capital and to make a profit. So if you want to make a profit, you need to invest some money in it or buy some product or uh, buy some uh, metal commodity or whatever it is at the lowest value possible and then when you want to make a profit you sell it and then you sell it at a higher price so buy low sell high so that's a formula that's that's your mental model Mm -hmm. that helps in investing yeah i i uh, the immediate thing that i thought about is uh, real estate because uh uh let's say yeah you if you want to sell a house obviously you're going to want to sell it at the highest price possible that that's what immediately came to mind and that's yes. what that's what True. that's what i'm saying True. and yeah uh, since you know we all have paid rent and etc at one point of time we or uh, whenever we talk to um, uh, a leaser we want to uh, you know get a, a flat or something that's at the lowest possible rent or etc exactly. as possible exactly. so uh, that makes a lot of sense so are there like different types of mental models or other classifications which we can use or something like that? Um, I mean, it's a very, basically I, mental models are common sense. Mm-hmm. But like you say, when you're looking for types or when you're trying to categorize it, yeah, some very, really, really common category that we can make is like finance models, uh, technology or coding models, okay. then architectural models, okay. and then f- physics or nature models. Okay. So basically, we can try to understand different, different concepts in different, different fields mm. with one single mental model. So um, as in, can you use like a nature model to understand something in finance? And it is true. Yes, you can do that. Okay. So for example, uh, one of my the famous or really popular huh. models that people use for nature and financing is huh growth that is tree okay consider that uh, you are basically watering a plant right. the plant will eventually grow into a tree right. so that is very similar to investing is so basically you are creating a seed 
in investing par- parlance it is like a capital or like a seed amount that you put in some particular venture or you put in some kind of investment and you continuously water it water is translated to like small sips or small incremental investments you make and as and when time passes the investment grows and the tree grows and uh, eventually the tree uh, grows so high that eventually it be- bears fruits and you get dividends or you get some other benefits out of your investment and i think uh, the uh, uh, the change portion also translates into this model like uh, let's say okay something is not going right you do a small change so that it starts uh, uh, growing uh, uh, i'm not i'm not sure if i'm explaining this right yeah one uh, mental model that you can apply here is for example let's say the tree is not growing mm-hmm. fast enough <laughs> so you have to try to identify the problem say that maybe there are some other weeds or maybe there are some other plants that are sucking in a lot of uh, you know and moisture or right. nutrient right. that is causing that tree to not grow faster so you weed right. the particular weeds or you remove that other plant so that this tree or you put more fertilizer or something Got that it. it grows faster Got it. So this is a mental model for nature and finance um and i i think that subconsciously we do apply these models in everyday life uh, i don't think we realize we uh, apply these models but yes. we do you know yeah we do generally when we when we are young we use mental models to understand different different things that are happening around us and that's how we learn young kids learn different languages right. using like for example you know one language right. you try to compare with you know another new language and then you try to compare and then learn about it so kids learn these ways and uh, like for example uh, like maths maths can be taught to kids using chocolates or uh, you know uh, science can be mm. taught to kids using actually working in a garden or working playing and mm-hmm, things like mm-hmm. that these are different models that as kids we learn and then the more mental models we have the more easier it is for us to uh, gain more knowledge or to understand and you know to comprehend what is happening around us that makes a lot of sense because you know back when i was in college and everything there were there were a lot of things i could not understand back then which i understand now because I realize now that I have been subconsciously using some sort of a mental model to understand uh, um uh, very complex concepts like calculus or mm-hmm. let's say organic chemistry and all of that. So yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So how would um a person understand the nitty gritty of investments using a mental model let's say i'm not just talking about okay fine obviously they understand fine a tree grows the same way the investment grows and everything but uh, uh, the finer details of investing and uh, uh, understanding uh, what happens when this this uh, trade goes up what happens when this trade goes down etc can you use a mental model to understand those finer details also uh it comes with a little bit, little bit of experience so for example anything can be explained using the concept of supply and demand okay so price of a stock goes down or price of a product goes down maybe there is not enough demand or maybe there is too much supply so you can actually use any model to understand any concept the problem is uh, there are more chances of being wrong so right. so the thing is better to have a lot of different mental models in your toolkit to tackle the problem and then trying to gain more understanding out of it for example one of the famous adage or famous proverbs that everyone knows for a guy with a hammer every problem is a nail hmm hmm so so you if you are want you want to fix a screw you don't use a hammer mm-hmm. you need to use a different mental model you need to use a different tool hmm. so yeah you can try to hit the screw and then try to place it but yeah it's difficult it's not efficient and sometimes it can go wrong so these are the things that we should be really careful of that just having one or two mental models or ideas and then applying it will not always lead to the best outcome mm-hmm. so it's better to have multiple tools multiple mental models in your mind and to tackle the same problem in different different ways so that okay then you gain a better understanding and you know exactly okay what maybe sometimes you don't understand what it is mm-hmm. but you can understand what it is not i get what you're saying and i uh, this is also what i wanted to ask like let's you said it was obviously it's all common sense i understand that completely but uh, let's say there a person who does not have a lot of like world experience and obviously there are people True. like that so how, can you 
consciously learn a mental model um and recognize it and use it like later i i think yes, you can you yeah you can no? it's obviously you can right. thing is uh, how do we do it hmm. so the first thing is to learn different mental models learn different concepts and try to use them and try to process them and try to use it in different different situations oh okay yeah uh, try to use it in different different situations so yeah uh i think it also comes with repetition right True. um Practice you can yeah, yeah. Uh, you can't uh, even if you are learning a very simple mental model to remember the mental model and use it you know just like that yes, you, you need, need uh, yeah use it when you need it you'll probably need a lot of practice with the mental model uh, the most important thing is uh, not just to remember which mental uh, what, uh, that you can use the mental model mm-hmm. but to know that is it the right model to use to tackle the problem hmm is it the right mental model mm-hmm. for example like i said uh, we can try to learn a language with another language for example most best example is you want to learn french mm. so if you know let's say for example uh, uh let's say a south indian language or a hindi it's very difficult to learn french but if you know uh, another european language mm. it's much easier to learn french hmm so makes sense so yeah the right tool for the right situation or the mm. best outcome hmm do you know of any particular mental models that might help people invest better uh, this is one of the most famous uh, mental models used by charlie munger okay. so charlie munger and warren buffett are you know the 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 you know the flag the goats the goats yeah the <laughs> I, goats of finance i know warren buffett who is uh, what is the name of the other person charlie munger charlie munger so, okay so well, charlie munger is warren buffett's partner oh, okay fine so okay. no one uh, no sin that well as warren buffett but right. it is very important part right. of that particular do okay so he, uh, his famous thing mental model that he always says is invert or inversion hmm. so uh, it's a very good example so for example let's say there are a lot of books like everyone wants to be how do you become rich mm mm-hmm. there are 1000 ways or probably there are 10000 ways of becoming rich you don't know exactly which way to choose invert the problem mm-hmm. find out how not to become poor <laughs> oh. it is much more easier to solve or at least easier to start with for example what are the things that you should not do ah that will eventually you know uh, reduce your uh, reduce your income income okay or something like for example uh, most very example is if you want to be rich hmm. you have to earn money hmm. and spend less hmm. so hmm. first thing to becoming rich is spending less hmm. Hmm. once you do that step then again go to the next step what else can you do so that you become rich so and then you go step by step by step and then doing all the things that you should not do i mean Yeah, yeah I uh, understand. And doing all the things that eliminating all the things. Ah, <laughs> eliminating okay. all the things that you should not do. <laughs> ah. And then eventually you get to a place where you know yeah that's the way. Right. Yeah, because rich. you know you, you know your body should not do. So then slowly it slowly you will know things. what you should do. Okay. Yeah. Uh this is called the mental model of inversion. Invert. Yeah. Hmm. That makes a lot you of sense. Can apply to a lot of things. And the way uh, Charlie Munger explained one other thing is uh, how do you become wise? Okay. It's very simple. I mean, the when you think about the proper way, right. it's really difficult. You need there are a lot of different ways of becoming wise. Right, right, right. Sometimes it experience age with reading more, with learning more. Correct. But if we inverted it, sometimes <laughs> it's like a basic idea. <laughs> Just don't, don't do stupid do some, things. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't do something that is stupid. Oh yeah. That. And as and when you practice it, you you basically inculcate that particular process. then you will become more and more wise and you'll, you'll, you'll be much faster hmm that makes a lot of sense and it, mm, it's obviously it basically simplifies your problem yeah. but there's there are so many people who never get into like investing because they they obviously understand it's so complicated okay it's so complicated i am just going to do whatever i know how how uh, to do it i'm not going to venture into these new new concepts because i don't particularly understand it so if you want to understand it yeah sim- uh, how do you simplify it this yeah. inversion model works really really well uh, inversion model is a start it will mm-hmm. not work it will not get you yeah. to the end it's Got just a it. start to 
tackle a particular problem so let's say you become a uh, let's say you got your foundations all right with mm. your inversion model you know now what not to do and everything so um let's say there's this intermediate investor who who knows a little but does not know a lot and who still wants to learn more uh what sort of a model would he, would he or she like shift to to understand so things better so the most important thing that charlie munger warren buffett and any other value investors say is to be an investor is not to be a specialist is mm-hmm. to be a generalist like like Should a jack of all arts master of none sort of a thing Uh, not necessarily master of none you can be master of something mm-hmm. but you should know have a basic foundation of everything mm-hmm. because at the end business is about everything business is about a company business is about the people who run the company it is about the value principles that the company follows are they really good management and uh, sometimes it's about the environment economic situation sometimes it's about their employees and trade unions and things like that there are so many different factors you cannot know everything about everything so it is better to know some things a basic idea of everything and then you eventually sp- at least have a specialist knowledge in one particular type of company or one particular uh, theme or one particular you know uh, industry and things like that that is the most important thing about you need to be a generalist first and then you go into your niche or you go into your special specialization mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. all right so finance aside uh, obviously this me- these mental models can be used like everywhere for everything so i thought we could like do a small thing where you let me know of a situation or uh, an some an example and i'll try to like use a mental model to see if i i can understand that situation without actually understanding the situation in the beginning yeah so let's use inversion itself i can tell you an example or a story of how this inversion was used a very uh, famous sculpture i don't know if it was da vinci or i don't know exactly who okay. the famous sculpture is was but someone asked him or uh, how did you make that particular stone sculpture okay it was such detailed and thing huh. and the the sculpture person sculptor, sculptor i think sculptor yeah, sculptor, yeah, yeah. Huh. sculptor said that i just removed everything huh. that is not that such but that is so difficult to understand for me because it there is so much to remove to make sure a person's face is exactly that person's face but i understand the concept don't get me wrong no. i just can't envision it in such a way where if he like removes all of those uh, extra pieces you get that person's features that's I mean, that's the thing so when uh, basically whenever you're going to start something you may have an ideal picture that you want to draw hmm. and then let's say that particular picture is what you want to get out of it hmm. the first step is an outline hmm. it is not that ideal picture you don't you don't try to perfect it the first time you try to create an outline that is basically trying to remove or erase everything that is not perfect you, you know uh, uh, how i understand how how i partially understand this is uh, obviously i have done like drawings and everything mm-hmm. i uh, we like entered in competitions whatever whatever so um back when i was like properly drawing and you know trying to like understand drawing i would always think of it as uh, adding things yes not eliminating yeah, yeah. and i suppose i was doing a little bit of elimination even though i thought i was adding true uh i think now that you talk about inversion and uh, uh, you know the process of elimination i sort of understand that maybe even back then even without knowing it i was doing elimination but i thought it was like adding things true uh, i can give you an example let's say uh, there is an amateur artist huh. who's trying to draw something ha huh. let's say he draws uh, a st- let's for take an example he draws a figure okay. standing on a street okay how is that different from an expert artist mm-hmm. so basically the, eventually the whole idea of painting is the source of light how light falls and how that particular object behaves in that particular light so an amateur artist mm. does not recognize that so basically the whole element is a painting becomes great mm. the main difference between an amateur and an expert painting is shadow hmm. that is hmm. absence of light <laughs> so that is the basic things uh, that you know that you can think and you probably you can more, probably process it more that helps to 
see apply to much more other things yeah yeah that makes that makes a lot of sense uh yeah i think uh, this would this could apply to a lot of yeah, music fields. anything or even sending something a rocket to space even yeah yeah mm. i mean that, that's a little bit more complex mm. i understand that much complex for our <laughs> yes <laughs> yes so yeah that makes a lot of sense what what other like interesting things do you have about mental models obviously mental models are really interesting and we use mental models in our everyday lives for stuff without even realizing we use it but you know do you have like any other interesting the facts about it the most best example is dieting dieting yeah so let's say you want to decrease your weight ha huh. you don't think about what are the good foods to eat you generally first thing that you think about is what foods to avoid yeah that's most simple and that's something that everybody does right. okay if you avoid sweets chocolates sugars and all those things yeah. then yeah that's a good chance of you losing weight slowly over a period of time hmm. and then eventually figure out what foods that you can substitute yeah what easier things to do is to avoid eliminate and then can improve upon what you can do more So that's something that everybody does. It's internal to us. Hmm. We do it in a, our mind. Actually, does this on every single day. It is just that we don't. It is so natural it. that yeah. we don't think about it. I it's suppose. Subconscious. Yeah, probably. yeah, yeah. So I think so. it would probably be the same thing when you're like riding a vehicle. Um, yeah, two wheeler, four wheeler, whatever hmm. it is. Yeah, another example for that is uh, how to be a best driver. Hmm. You can. you cannot control how other people drive you can only control how you drive hmm. so to be a best driver probably the simple example could be be a defensive driver hmm. expect that other people will make mistakes and hmm. accommodate for that in that way you will become a best driver okay okay i think uh, it helps us a lot with problem solving in general um uh, the more mental models you know the quicker you can like uh make your brain access those models to solve more problems easier more effectively and so on and, and so forth and so these problems are real life problems hmm. I mean, these are not just textbook problems or something like that so some things the problems that you encounter in uh, real life and then you try to use okay instead of panicking instead of breathing you try to go through all these models in your head and think okay what can i do yeah how you override fear and go into the logical part mm-hmm. of your brain mm-hmm. and start solving the problems mm-hmm. as and when it arises mm-hmm. so so how um anyway i'll just let you continue uh, obviously there are other like mental models mm-hmm. that uh, that are there that's like really useful in solving problems and yeah i'll just let yeah so the next mental model one moment model which is something that everyone is familiar with it's a little bit philosophical is occam's razor I've heard about the term Occam's yeah. razor. I've heard mm. it used a lot everywhere, but I don't really know what Occam's Occam's razor is. So Occam's razor is let's state it if there are two competing hypotheses, mm. two competing ways of fixing a problem or if there are two ideas or uh, of uh, doing something. That are like polar opposites. They are different, not necessarily polar opposites. Okay, okay. But it can be three competing ideas. I'm just thinking uh, two for simplicity. Uh, 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 uh. So choose one which is the simplest okay. explanation uh-huh. or simplest solution. Mm-hmm. Is. So it can be applied in different different fields. So for example, uh, the best uh, most basic example that we can give is let's say you hear the sound of hooves. Okay. Mm. Your mind immediately goes to a horse. Exactly. It does mm. not go to a zebra. <laughs> right. So if you are given the option of a zebra or a horse. Huh. your mind subconsciously knows immediately goes to horses because that is more the likely that is most simplest explanation for that particular problem okay it doesn't go to a complex problem like okay it could be a zebra it could uh, be an elephant uh, elephant is not hoofs uh, okay you don't think complex about it uh, immediately goes to the simplest solution uh, uh, so then there are you have multiple for example example is uh, there are two or three options that you are given uh, choose the one that is you think that is the simplest explanation Or the, that that answer explains that problem. Which oh, uh, you know, uh, I've like seen these sort of questions in like um, exams and all where you know you the uh, the question is uh, choose a synonym that describes this word perfectly, something uh, like that. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay, 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 okay. Huh. But I mean, it's a little complex. I mean. Uh, it's so, not very easy to understand when to use this. Yeah, I mean. Uh, I think the first challenge is in identifying. Okay, 
are these hypotheses really competing or not in the first place so how um, what i mean you need an example for it ha huh. so for example let's say that uh, okay someone has done uh, really really well in their exams and they have scored really high marks okay so there are two possible explanations one possible explanation is uh, they have worked hard they have studied a lot and then there are competing hypotheses that he has been trained or he has been instructed in such a way that he has been more expert in this way or uh, it can be said that uh, he's just lucky he's just lucky okay this okay. time okay mm. so sometimes simplest may not i mean you have to understand what simple is to you right. probably the simplest answer is probably he is an expert in those particular questions and answers and then he did really well and that is one way of doing it but if you go to different degrees of problems right so for example you take uh, someone who has won a million dollars with gambling huh what is the simplest explanation it is not hard work it is not right the simplest right. explanation is it is lucky right right so apply the right simple solutions for the right you know problems. problems okay that makes sense that makes sense yeah uh it would be and it would not even be prudent to use the luck uh, uh solution for a person who has like scored high marks because that uh, that's not exactly common sense so uh, yeah mm. and it's not prudent either yeah so it makes sense what you say when you say uh find which solution is how this is useful is always let's say someone comes to you and says uh i invested 10 lakhs huh. i made 30 lakhs huh. in one year huh. okay should, you so you try to find the simplest solution there may be multiple reasons hmm. for why he was successful there is possible that he did the hard work he really did the analysis and he found out and then he invested and then he made it and then or he just got lucky hmm. so use these kind of hypotheses and mental models to come to the essence of the truth and are you comfortable with the truth yeah uh and uh, this would probably be useful because if you if you just uh, um say that okay fine he's earned so much so i'm going to do whatever this person has done ditto with no other deviations um to gain as much as he or she gained so that that would not be a, a wise decision mm-hmm. so yeah so this is occam's razor occam's razor and there are two competing hypotheses always Choose go for the simplest, simplest simplest one simplest explanation or the simplest solution is things like that okay so we saw inversion yeah we saw occam's, gen- razor. Uh, occam's razor and we also sort of touched upon how you need to use generalism more when it comes to like investing and, and then think about specialization yes. and we also saw how nature's models can be used for right. understanding some of the concepts can you um so is it uh, possible to use every model for every other sort of a problem let's say uh, can you use a finance model for a, a physics sort of a problem or a very complex physics sort of a problem or something it's possible like it's always possible so there is a very uh, important uh, discussion that goes on in quantum physics hmm so basically what they did was um, there are some really unsolvable very difficult problems to solve in physics mm-hmm. which people are still thinking about and uh, if you go through some uh, you know blog posts or some articles of scientists and think like that the way they have tried to solve problems is to bring in more different people so physicists have been thinking about the same problems for years and years and years and sometimes uh, they try to come up with six things that is possible for this explanation but they are still missing that rest of the three or four things that probably explains that particular phenomenon or concept so what some physicists do is uh, invite people from different different fields like uh, technology uh, you know construction finance or things like that and they will have different models mm. engineering people will have different models mm. and then if they work along with them mm. can they find at least one or two more missing points hmm. that explains this phenomenon or to gain a better understanding right so this are like basically the thing is about uh, collaboration right so collaboration with people with different different models will 
get you to the root of the problem and get you a better solution probably faster than you alone doing mm. it yourself yeah this basically comes down to different people have different ideas so if you have people who have like uh, different talents it it's gonna like strengthen your organization or business or whatever it is model, yeah, yeah. i think i just used a mental model to describe something else true, okay true. yeah that makes sense so now like like all uh, uh, mathematical problems mm. and then phys- a lot, lot of uh, high physics problems mm. are being published to everyone so that anyone can probably comment and then give their suggestions maybe that will eventually lead to a a better, better this solution. thing like uh, like open source uh, coding crowdsourcing crowdsourcing, right. crowdsourcing is the mental model ah. uh, you solving a problem by mm. yourself mm. basically you have been working for 5 years and you are not able to solve it mm. just publish it mm. so universities are publishing all these kind of problems mm. in their website and mm. then they are uh, you know inviting, uh, inviting people. people to come up with suggestions and improvements and things like that and they are crowdsourcing some solutions and seeing whether this can be explained or this can be you know improved and so on Yeah, that's nice. So crowdsourcing is one of the mental models. Crowdsourcing is a is different. It's a tool basically. It's a, it's a tool. Ha, huh? it's it is it comes under a mental model. I mean it depends. Yeah. Basically a model crowdsourcing is a model. Okay, okay, okay. So in yeah. your mind you know that crowdsourcing can be used to tackle one problem. Hmm. So that's how it. Is. Basically these are all different tools in your toolkit. Hmm. That's hmm. how Charlie Munger explains it. You just don't just have one hammer in your toolkit. Hmm. Have different tools so that each hmm. problem hmm. can be tackled in a better way that's nice so what other mental models that you can think of like music or in chemistry huh. in in chemistry i realized that uh, uh uh obviously even when i was studying organic chemistry and all back in school i did not understand anything uh i did not uh, i mean i struggled so much to understand what is a single bond double bond and all of that and um, uh, i thought um okay as i grow older i'm going to forget all of these concepts but because i learned all of that so repetitively without understanding because you know i had to like clear all of the exams and everything somehow or the other the concepts ha- ha- are still like stuck in my head to the point where i can subconsciously use them to solve something but i i i and it's so abstract the way i yeah. solve the problems yeah. with it also i can't even properly describe it True. so i'm still not able to properly describe how i i used it to solve a problem True. but i i understand that it is relevant and it's somehow important to so this is like uh, for example this is one of the common uh, you know phrases that people tell like no education is wasted education right so the things and concepts that you learn something sometime even if you think it is not useful suddenly it will become useful 10 years later yeah and i i definitely realized that i mean uh back when i was like studying i was, uh, i definitely felt like you know th- this is never going to be useful i'm never going to use this anywhere at mm-hmm. all uh, but yeah i think with age uh, all of this like uh, sort of like comes yeah. into play yeah, yeah it becomes clear yeah yeah so, and this uh, is explained in by physicists also mm-hmm. so a lot of uh, students who wants who want to become phd's or doctorates in physics they spend a lot of time they have to spend uh, you know years and years of effort to understand a lot of uh, high energy concepts or string theory and mm. quantum things and a mm. lot of things like that mm. so a lot of people find it very very difficult in their first 3 years and first 5 years but uh, one of the famous uh, professors and then uh, nobel laureates in physics always said that it is going to be that way mm. suddenly one point of time after let's say 5 years or 7 years suddenly all the concepts that you learned in the first 3 or 4 years suddenly everything will come into place mm. and that is basically it's a spurt it's a knowledge spurt mm. it will not make sense but you just have to keep pushing keep learning keep trying to learn 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 and then eventually there will be one day where just you are thinking of something else and then right, everything, everything sort of comes clicks. into place everything mm. clicks this is an aha eureka moment that happens a lot of time right. so let's just like with archimedes right yeah yeah, yeah he was uh, yeah that makes sense that makes sense Hmm. What else do you have about mental models? I find them really, really interesting. By the way, yeah, on the and when you spoke about Archimedes, Archimedes me- mental yeah. models, that is the theory of buoyancy, displacement, displacement. Yeah. And uh, he also has another kind of uh, uh, model called leverage. Hmm. So the story goes like this. Hmm. So when the Romans were attacked by large ships, 
so archimedes came up with uh, a lever hmm. that will eventually with the right amount of uh, force. force will eventually push the ship away f- i mean basically push the ships away f- up right uh, and then the ships are swinging and then all the pe- all the soldiers up from that ship are falling down so, so use the concept of leverage to displace ships like a pulley ocean. system pulley and uh, lever it's a lever pull, uh, okay a lever to sort of like drag ships out of the water and swing them like you would as yeah. you would uh, a ball on a string yeah. or so something so archimedes uh, it seems uh, used to do a lot of fun things like this <laughs> used a lot of uh, uh, geometrical concepts and leverage and a lot of things to solve real world problems hmm. like wars how to win wars how to build a, a cannon or how to build a missile and basically uh, how, what is the right way to pack a missile hmm. so that it goes the furthest hmm. so all these things he, he uses a lot of tools geometrical tools and a uh, lot of things that he learns from nature and physics hmm. physics is the study of nature right hmm. so a hmm. lot of things that he learns and then applies these things hmm. to solve real world problems hmm. in in uh throughout all of this the only prop that was constantly in my mind uh, whenever we uh, as and when we like discuss this through the course of this is that necessity is the mother of invention mm. uh, sort true. of sort of that's that's what i sort of like picked up okay you know we start uh, thinking about all of these things more with a mental model when we mm. really need it when yeah exactly so the thing is uh, try to pick up a lot of different different models mm. when you really need it one thing will come one thing will come okay yeah, yeah. that's another way of looking yeah, at it that's nice yeah 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 that's nice if you read the book uh, richer happier and wiser mm. i think william green the author mentions this of, of two investors who th- the investment philosophy is based on a book uh, it is something like uh, the book is very similar to uh, kind of art of maintaining a motorcycle so they they use this particular concept for the all the investment philosophies and the investments basically this particular art is like for making quality decisions mm-hmm. or making quality improvements mm-hmm. that's how you maintain a motorcycle and that's how you can maintain your investments mm-hmm. and that's how the mental model you know sort of forms yeah so yeah it's a story first mm. so basically the art of maintaining motorcycle is basically a book that tells you how best to take care of your motorcycle what are all the different different things that you can uh, do to make the motorcycle in a peak performance performant condition uh, condition so the same thing when i was thinking about it uh, so it's a different way you would you would think that i am going in one direction but i'm going in a completely different a different tangent okay so uh, i read about it i understood what that basically what they are uh, telling it about is a good quality right. but what i thought about what different mental model that i can relate to is basically there was a different kind of uh, a story that i had read some time before that uh, let's say when you do charity hmm. uh, you think that you are making the world a better place hmm. Hmm. but let's use the first mental model and invert it okay what if doing charity hmm. is making you a better person oh okay i did not expect this sort of an inversion honestly okay okay now, we are not done yet yeah, so we are not how done do, how are we connecting how am i connecting this huh. to the art of maintaining a motorcycle huh. so the thing is let's i'll restate what i said before uh, let's say doing charity the assumption is you are making a world a better place okay. but there is also a possibility that doing charity makes you a better person hmm. now the thing is art of uh you know maintaining, maintaining a motorcycle mm-hmm. let's say you working on a motorcycle you making smaller smaller improvements to the motorcycle mm. what if it is not the motorcycle that is being better mm. what if you are becoming better oh uh, because you sort of learn how to fix things better how to exactly or you learn how to work hard or how to be patient or not to not to necessarily work hard also how to work smart and make small small changes that is going to exactly uh, exactly okay and you know this this just sort of tells to me right. that um, you know uh you know that there are some people who think very differently yes. very very differently they use mental models that you might sometimes laugh at also mm. it this just shows me not to discount anybody's mental model or anybody's perspective in general yes. because you you never know 
how you can like relate uh, it to something and make it work you know so that this is what is it's basically like teaching me so yeah, yeah. So, so yeah i'll let you continue yeah, yeah so the final part of uh-huh. my <laughs> right. uh, my mental model or my mental process hmm. so eventually for me something everything eventually comes back to physics okay. so i go back to newton's law okay. every action has an equal and opposite reaction hmm. that that is uh, analogy for charity also Hmm. you try to make the world a better place you become a better person hmm. so the, act, the action that you do hmm. you are getting a reaction in yourself right right in the same way is with the motorcycle so you are trying to make the motorcycle better that is the action that you doing but the reaction is that you are becoming a better uh, at something or you getting more patient or your personality is improving right uh, i i counter something hmm. so every action is also an equal and opposite reaction how is this opposite in a sense is i understand and the mental an model external action hmm. has an internal reaction oh okay. that's that's how i think okay 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 it makes sense makes sense hmm. uh what what other like analogies do you have an interesting analogies uh, so another physics example is the concept of critical mass hmm. so when it comes to nuclear bombs hmm. and then uh, making some kind of a uh, chain reaction mm-hmm. so there is something idea called as critical mass mm. that is the smallest amount of fissile material required for a sustained nuclear chain reaction okay the the threshold that you need to start uh, a chain reaction no no it's to sustain a chain reaction sustain okay so okay. basically what you're doing is for example you put let's say 10 pounds of force mm-hmm. and then let's say that particular object moves mm-hmm. but eventually that object will stop Okay. Oh, okay. Understood. So that Understood. so that particular force has a limit. Hmm. The, hmm. But in uh, you know nuclear physics, there is something called as a critical mass. It is an amount of energy that explodes in such a way. After that, there is no additional energy that energy you need that to provide. Energy that is required right. that will sustain itself. That is basically the sun. Got it. The sun has some uh, critical mass, and then it starts to uh, you know throw yeah. light and throw heat and. and try to you know push all this uh, uh, heat away and form a light and then it's trying to internally you know get that particular energy back and then again it tries to throw more energy out mm-hmm. so this is a critical mass that hits a critical point where it sustains itself mm. so what is the mental model that you're using this uh, this is like a mental model that eventually can be used for finance ah okay so for example you have a big chunk of money huh. which you invest huh. and after a point of time it starts giving returns in such a way that you don't have to add more money it just sustains itself an investment that sustains itself hmm. so it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger basically it's compounding hmm. Hmm. so that's what you do so for example some people don't have that large chunk of money hmm. so they do something called a systematic investment and they do small amounts of money correct correct so you do systematic investment month after month after month let's say you do for one year three year five year 10 year and 15 years probably there will be a point of time where that amount will reach a critical point where you don't need to invest anymore it will just start throwing off returns in such a way that you will not be able to spend that particular amount of ah, money ah that makes a lot of sense so yeah. that is that critical mass so that yeah. is the nirvana of you know, <laughs> investing huh. or you know uh, value investing or any kind of investment hmm. you do it such a small thing again and again and again and eventually it reaches a critical point hmm. after that you don't need to put in any more of your energy hmm. all the returns that you get is something that even you cannot enjoy it's something that you can pass it on to your children hmm. and grandchildren and so hmm. on hmm. and that's nice that's nice nice Mm-hmm. and it is uh, similar for it can be applied for many other things the small learnings that you do mm-hmm. you learn little by little day by day day by day after that it reaches a critical point and then there's a sudden knowledge spurt mm-hmm. you understand basically so many other things yeah yeah and that is the same concept yeah and uh, i think uh, you know even if you can't uh, take uh, an entire ment- uh, an en- a mental model in its entirety uh based on your perspective you can at least use a part of that mental model mm-hmm. to make sure uh you make good decisions or you you make things that make sense to you so basically it's about building convictions building sorry what conviction convictions so you can use mental model for in this particular example it's basically building conviction you know that you know at some point of time it is going to get so big mm. that 
you know uh, it will give you larger and larger returns right because that's a proven thing it is a proven thing so that all of a lot of other people have done it and it could also apply to you mm-hmm. and basically what it is it's building conviction that you just continue to do yourself mm. you continue to believe that it has worked for others and it is it makes sound sense mm. so that's why you're going to continue you're not going to stop mm. just continue to do your systematic investment plans mm. and then you just going to continue to invest in yourself by reading more and more mm. eventually it will come to a critical point where it will give you a larger and larger benefits mm. i like that um, mental models are somehow abstract yeah but they inherently make a lot of sense even if you do not understand it from the uh, from uh, a shallow pers- from the shallow yeah, point yeah. perspective uh, yeah i think th- that's what i like take away from this that you know never discount any mental model True. or never think that oh someone else's mental model you know is not exactly right or something yeah. that's laughable you know sure. so that that's what i take away from this yeah Mm. So one other uh, mental model that uh, you know I would like to share is something called a sacrifice play. So this is a very very popular you know concept in at least in the parlance of chess. Mm. So basically, when you play chess, uh, you try to sacrifice your one of your pawns, knights, bishops, or queen to gain an advantage and to win the game. Mm. So basically, you're trying to sacrifice something now to gain something bigger and better. for the, the greater end. good for the greater good mm. and uh, th- and this is very similar to another concept that is called as delayed gratification so basically uh, you you're living your life you try to avoid some big purchases that gratify you hmm like try, trying to buy a car trying to buy a new phone mm. trying to buy you know a new appliance or mm-hmm. trying to buy a new dress you you try to avoid all those things save that money basically and then eventually put it in savings or put it in investments and then after some point of time you gratify yourself by making a big purchase or, or any purchase that you f- uh, that any you feel like that you want at a later point of time hmm delayed Not gratification in- instead of uh, you know being happy for now ha delay something and be really happy later right right small sacrifices for for something better for the yeah, future okay yeah. that so this is called as a sacrifice play sacrifice play okay okay that's nice and delayed gratification a lot of other finance parlance they use delayed gratification mm-hmm. but generally its mental model is called a sacrifice play hmm and uh, this also like uh, the delayed uh, gratification concept also comes back to the um to the thought we ended on with the first episode like uh, um um the rule number 1 is never lose money rule number 2 uh don't forget, don't forget the first one. rule so how i sort of like apply this is um how i sort of relate it, relate and use my perspective to develop a mental model is um uh obviously i have been a little uh concerned about a particular stock that i have been investing in uh i i kept uh, going back towards seeing it oh it's going down it's going down it's going down that that was what has been like going through in my mind so um that's when i always remember that the rule the the thought that we thought never lose money and don't forget the first rule so my thought process is that um i will wait uh, until i stop losing money uh, and mm, then um uh i decide what to do with it you so, know that so was my mental model so it is a mental model hmm. is it right or wrong that's debatable correct why correct. because hmm. uh there is another thought process there that is if a stock is losing hmm. value hmm. you know it is losing value for a good reason and then it's better to go away from that yeah understand your losses and move away understood move on. Hmm. the thing is if you know the stock is losing value just because of some euphoria or a sentiment and then it will come back it is not the inherent uh, you know the intrinsic value is hmm. still hmm. you know it's still, it's still there. there there hmm. is still a lot of value in that particular business hmm. as you have a high conviction hmm. in that business hmm. then yeah you just wait it out yeah. I mean, there are lots of ups and downs in the market yeah and it, it depends on choosing the right model for the right thing right yeah exactly. so exactly. yeah yeah that makes sense yeah so what are the models do you have what are the models do you find yeah, interesting we did, we did discuss a lot of models yeah. now so yeah. in your particular life 
I mean, since you already think that you would definitely be using some of these mm. thought processes, mm. so you can t- t- tell me some of your thought process, and I c- I can see what model that I can think of that matches yours. Okay, the the problem is I uh I think I inherently know these mental models, but I don't know their names. Yes, I don't true. know, so <laughs> it's a little uh, difficult to like yeah. explain it. Uh, in terms of um. finance how i would explain it is uh, my thought process is that uh, whatever excess i have now in my savings and everything uh, every month or every two every alternate month or so i put a little bit of that into let's say mutual funds or yeah. recurring or whatever yeah. whatever so that uh, uh, in 10 years i will have uh, in 10 i'm saying yeah in 10 years i'll have enough to make a um a make up purchase that will make my life better in the next 10 years yeah. yeah so it's like um it's it's a long long run play honestly because i am uh, making s- uh, certain decisions now so that in i am uh, assuming that in 10 years i will have this 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 much mm. to uh to be better prepared for the next uh, uh, right. 10 years so now that you say your story the first thought that comes to my mind is mm. uh, one of the rules or it can be a mental model it's an idea mm. it's called pay yourself first hmm so basically whatever extra money that you earn what you think that is extra mm. is basically you're paying yourself okay so the pay yourself uh, uh, idea is something like this so let's say you have a salary of 20000 okay you have to pay your rent Mm. you have to pay for groceries mm. you have to pay for your phone mm. you have to phone bills or any other electricity bills mm-hmm. utilities mm. and then uh, any purchases that you have to make for your home mm. so all these things 20000 has to be paid to someone else mm. before doing all that pay yourself first oh pay 100 rupees pay 500 rupees for yourself mm. pay it into your savings account basically that means to save it mm-hmm. but the thing or the, in, the inversion of yeah. save it it's just it's just a nicer way to say <laughs> that you yeah so thing idea is you you're going to pay them 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 mm. but don't you pay yourself right right yeah it just makes you feel good when yeah. you say like you exactly. know you're paying exactly. yourself no yeah uh-huh. so there's a the thing this kind of mental models are like can do a combination play of mental models mm, mm, so mm. Like you can invert and then you can do something like uh, huh. compound huh. and then you can do different different mental models to the same problem and so it's, it's like a fun way of thinking and yeah. and, and your just thought process is a lot more cooler actually. yeah I, I, and it sort of makes your outlook a little bit more positive honestly if you if you yeah. think about it uh, i think these sort of mental models actually help you look at situations like the glass is still half full rather than True. empty you yeah? know optimism and pessimism yeah yeah so that's again when you say optimism pessimism there's a very good uh, story or i don't story it's an idea yes tell me tell so me. never uh, sell to a pessimist sell to an optimist ah okay that makes buy a lot of sense buy from a pessimist don't buy from an optimist buy from a pessimist hmm oh, yeah it makes sense it makes sense pessimist always give you things for cheap <laughs> optimist Since he's optimistic, he's okay about paying a little more. Right. Or what? Yeah. Uh, I suppose uh, this uh, this reminds me of um, bargaining in the streets. You know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, like uh, yeah, yeah. This basically reminds me of bargaining in the streets, which which comes back to what we were talking about initially. Yeah. We started off with talking about. So these uh, are real life things. Mm. Yeah, real life mm. things that we do. Mm. And sometimes uh, the thing is, there are a lot to see. The, all these mental models oh. can be used in a positive way. Right. but they can also be used in a negative way right right so for example let's take the concept of bargaining hmm. so you can feign pessimism hmm. to get a better price hmm hmm so you can say that uh, i don't need this hmm hmm i mean hmm. i don't think the value of this hmm. no one else will buy it from you for this price right and uh, yeah people do that you know people i that. i it's, i it's, a, it's using the same mental model but you can use it in a positive way you can use it in a negative way it's mm. how you use it mm-hmm. but yeah i mean see some people are like that some some people uh, we try to you know diminish them saying they are very very negative got it like got that. it but at the end of the day some people do that right. use the same mental models in negative but at the end they are trying to get better value for themselves correct yeah it's uh, it's i think it's it's more individualistic also how uh, uh, how pessimism and optimism works is itself 
somehow very individualistic uh from an outside perspective when a person does this with bargaining you would see that oh that's very pessimistic mm. but for that person they would be like no it's very optimistic i am getting a better value for myself so True. you know True. so it's so uh, yeah when a salesman comes to you mm. and he's trying to sell you something mm. you will always say that this will give you this 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 and that right it's basically he's trying to paint an optimistic picture correct correct mm. and uh, so the way to counter it mm. is to paint a pessimistic picture so yes you may say but i lose so much so much so much i cannot do this i cannot do this i cannot do this so what are you going to do about that yeah, so exactly. sorry <laughs> that's the way to counter an argument okay so that's how you debate and you know things like that. so for an example is that um, there's one more uh, very popular saying that uh, it all comes down to all these different kind of mental models mm-hmm. an idea that uh, let's say you say yes to something mm. let's say a lot of people come to you mm. like invest in my company invest in my company invest in my company mm. you say yes to something mm. yes to one one person mm. that means saying no to everyone else mm. or you could think of it as you know you could invert the thing invert it say yeah. i i told yes to the best possible thing or uh, did i say to the best possible thing or let's say i have you can say only yes so many times mm-hmm. so, true true so why don't you just say yes to the best thing just mm-hmm. wait for it mm-hmm. don't just say yes to anything first that comes along mm-hmm. so take your time mm-hmm. mental models are, are definitely interesting because um i think that when you start uh understanding what mental models are you become aware that okay so uh, i'm using a mental model right now and uh, this awareness can help you choose better mental models for yes. uh, different things so think I, about is it the right model hmm. for this particular thing hmm. something that you you're so used to it you know hmm. you use the same model you've been using for 5 years time hmm. take some time and think is it right Hmm. or is it some is there something better right yeah take like some time to understand what your mental model is first of all yeah. and then uh, is it right is there something better yeah. and so on and so identify forth identify the mistakes and try to see maybe what is better yeah and obviously this i would use it i mean obviously we are all using it for life in general not just for True. like it's all life in general i mean and it comes with practice hmm. like for me for an example like inversion was very very tough to understand mm-hmm. but the one simple sentence that made me understand inversion very simple was how to be wise mm. don't, don't be do stupid things yeah mm. yeah that really that one single and sentence and it sort of it sort of put that makes everything there. click like w- exactly. what we were talking about when you when you say something so simple it seems so profound sometimes exactly. you know so yeah. that uh, definitely makes a lot of sense and i understand why mental models are so important and i understand why it's so important to learn different different types of models and different perspectives and mm-hmm. see uh how other people think so that you can also make decisions better that that uh, that they def- definitely this is help. a very good uh, you know conversation piece with your friends so yeah just thinking aloud right when you talk to a gardener or an agriculturist so maybe they how they think about investments is based on different different plants they you know they grow they grow mm. for example let's say they are growing vegetables smaller vegetables and everything mm. so you sow something you get something in 3 months 6 months or 1 year mm. and then there are some things really long term like apple trees mm-hmm. or, or even you know wood trees you know that used to make furniture right trees that are really grow a long long time right those trees are not useful for you but useful for the next generation right. that's something like long term investing mm-hmm. or in you know, a parlance it's like insurance it's not useful for you it's useful for <laughs> correct after makes, you pass makes away. sense yeah insurance yeah yeah so they have that that could be an my way of thinking like that could be their mental model correct. that's how they think and understand yeah. and same way when you go to a chemist or when you go to things they could always think like there are some uh, medicines that move faster hmm like headache medicine mm-hmm. and things like that mm-hmm. there are some long term customers who you are like diabetic mm-hmm. they come come back again and again for a medicine every month right. in a periodic time yeah. and there are some long term so things like that a lot of different mental models people use you know um this actually um what this like tells me is if you can identify what sort of a mental model people are accustomed to you can use their mental model 
to uh, explain to them something that is not in their comfort zone uh, yes. um uh, if that makes sense like l- mm. let's say an agriculture we're talking to an agriculturist who does not understand uh, investing much exactly. so you can How use you their yeah. yeah yeah you can use their exam their own yeah, life models. yeah mm. uh, to and you can also this is the opposite way of thinking hmm. how do you use it negatively <laughs> <laughs> so for example you know a person has these kind of models right you can if if you try to really understand how they are thinking right. how th- what models they are using right. you can try to gain an advantage right please do not do that people <laughs> please don't yeah. yeah basically you can try to gain advantage when you are debating yeah yeah like yeah or subtle can, manipulation subtle tactic manipulation mm. kind of thing yeah. mm. that happens mm. that happens with sales people mm. that happens uh, that happens with a lot of you know um, sales people like basically when they're trying to sell you a product yeah uh, this reminded me of something because you know whenever you're like talking to sales people they try to establish a sort of a you know a friendly interest. camaraderie yeah. thing so yeah. the way they establish a camaraderie is by like asking you like uh not exactly personal questions but about your life in general so that they can identify oh okay so this is this sort of yeah, a person exactly. they're trying to put you into a bracket mm. so basically their mental model is like this mm. they know four kinds of people mm. Uh, uh, something like people who are middle aged just age is very yeah, simple it's, bracket to uh, yeah, put okay. people who are earning high and then people who spend a lot people mm. who don't spend a lot mm. they trying to put it into brackets and then that is their model and then eventually they come to some kind of a conclusion that okay, these things will suit or mm. they can think that this will suit you more mm. or they can say that they, they usually go for these kind of things yeah. so it will be better for me to sell those things yeah that makes sense yeah yeah so this is basically gaining an advantage you thinking more you trying to understand people better mm. and eventually it's about behavior personality everything comes mm. into play mm. so yeah that that those are things and most of the time we are taken advantage of by sales people for sure <laughs> it, it is for not sure. that not all sales people are bad it is yeah. just it's just that they are they are doing it because you know they have that's their job, yeah. that's their job and it's their job to like uh, gain sales so it makes sense when you think it about sense. it from their perspective it's just that but you know it's our uh, it's to our benefit that we understand what they're trying to do correct and correct. we understand that okay immediately when someone says something mm. it clicks okay this is the model that they're using mm. okay now what should i do mm. probably sometimes the best thing is if you're not sure mm. okay if you asking me now mm. i'll say no mm-hmm. if you give me time to think about it i might say yes ah that's okay. like a standard approach that anyone can follow mm. so these are like standard models standard responses and things that you fit into your mind mm. and eventually you get a lot more benefit in your real life mm. and i think that is a good spot to like end here Thank you for listening to Bob and Tag Talk. Please consider following us on our Instagram and Facebook pages for weekly summaries and illustrations of the topics discussed on the podcast. If you found this episode informative, please like, share and subscribe.